clauses one and two stand part. Phil Twyford. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to make some comments about the title clause, sir, sir, and I have three suggestions for the House to consider on um, alternative titles for this bill. The first, coined by my colleague Jacinda Ardern, is, a, is the trickle-down housing bill. And um, I want to say, sir, how unconvinced we are by um, the last-minute desperate uh, effort by the Minister to um, defend himself from accusations and pressure about the fact that this bill does not contain any real mechanism to deliver affordable housing. Mm. And um, by inserting at the last minute a provision that gives the government the power to issue by order in council uh, some requirements for a certain proportion of, of affordable housing units in a, um, a qualifying development gives us no confidence at all. And I want to I tell the House why, uh, sir. The first is that um, to require a proportion of affordable housing units is what's known as inclusionary zoning, uh, Mr Chairman. This government, within a month of being elected after the 2008 election, repealed the inclusionary zoning provisions that um, uh, the former Labor government had passed. This government uh, did away with all of the intentions of including state housing and affordable housing in Hobsonville, the biggest, most promising uh, urban development opportunity in Auckland. And we've heard on numerous occasions at Select Committee and in this House from the Minister that he doesn't believe in inclusionary zoning. He doesn't believe it works. He doesn't believe it's a good thing. So um, uh, giving the government the power to uh, require uh, inclusionary zoning uh, uh, by order in council uh, gives us no confidence at all, sir, that it will actually happen for those reasons. The second title that um, we think is worthy of consideration is the Poor Quality Housing Bill. And I just want to point to um, some uh, aspects of, um, of the bill that do give cause for alarm. Um, uh, clauses 32 and 61, for example, um, uh, 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 have the effect of essentially taking the RMA out of consideration for uh, the consideration of, of qualifying developments in special housing areas. And um, they strip the RMA out of the decision-making process for special housing areas. And it's pretty clear, uh, Mr Speaker, um, when you think about the, um, the reported comments of the Minister, where he told the New Zealand Herald on the 25th of May that Aucklanders need to get over their nimbyism and accept lower quality developments if they want affordable housing. The Minister said higher quality equates to high price and the Aucklanders need to accept lower quality developments. And this is one of the really disturbing things about this bill, is that it seeks to speed up the provision of affordable housing by reducing the quality protections and the environmental protections uh, that we would normally apply to, uh, to housing developments. And that, I think, is a real concern to Aucklanders. They don't want slums, but it's clearly the view of, of uh, Nick Smith that if Aucklanders want affordable housing, they have to accept lower standards. Yep. The third title, sir, that I want to suggest that I think would be a much more suitable uh, title for this bill is the Throw the Baby Out with the Bathwater Housing Bill. There are three things that National wants to trade off in order to deliver uh, 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 more housing development in Auckland. And the first is democracy, and we know from the override clauses in this bill that they are willing to, to take, yet again, more powers away from uh, local government. And the Human Rights Commission uh, expressed concern about this in its submission on the bill and talked about the, sort of the constant centralising of powers and taking away from um, local government. The quality uh, protections and the environmental protections um, I've already mentioned, sir. And the last point I want to make is that um, this bill thoughtlessly undermines the protection that certain special areas like the Waitakere Ranges enjoy by dint of the Waitakere Ranges Heritage Area Act. And um, that act, uh, uh, until the passing of this bill, has enjoyed primacy over other district and regional plans. That they, they are required, those other plans are required to be consistent with the provisions of the Waitakere Ranges Area uh, Heritage Area Act. But unfortunately, um, what this bill does is that it dilutes those protections and uh, it only requires 
um, the provisions of the, um, of the Waitakere Ranges uh, Heritage Protection Area um, uh, to, um, uh, to be considered. They don't have to be consistent with those provisions, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Dr Rajan Prasad. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, Mr Chairman, it's uh, 